Let's go! On episode 480 of Nintendo Switchcraft, your thoughts on the Animal Crossing Direct. How do you use your Switch and a Blood Moon? Switchcraft is brought to you live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can tune in live over at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. On Saturdays, I record a show all about what you want me to talk about. Use that hashtag on Twitter, AskRJS, or leave a message in the community Discord server, the channel that you're looking for is ask rjs this episode of switchcraft is made possible by patrons like you get switchcraft and all my other content ad free for as little as a dollar over at patreon.com slash run jump stomp okie dokie what did you think of the animal crossing direct i posted that as a tweet and people replied to it i asked uh did you love it did you say meh or did you hate it now uh, the people who hated it, um, that's fine. You can hate it if you want. I thought it was fantastic. But the 4.6 people, uh, I'm sorry, not 4.6 people, that's gross. 4.6% of people who responded said that they hated it, which is actually, I'm going to have to say, a, a, actually a surprisingly low number. Most of the time when you see a game that comes out that has an art style that people would classify with giant air quotes as kitty. Uh, that, that usually gets a lot more hate. So 4.6% of people really hated it. I'm not sure why. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the comments and see what people said. 67.8% of people said that they loved it. And 27.6% of people said, meh, they didn't really care. All right, let's see what people thought. I personally, I mean, I talked about this on yesterday's episode. I personally thought it was great, especially because they didn't have a bunch of microtransaction nonsense in there, uh, messing up what otherwise is, looks to be a fantastic game. Uh, let's see what you guys had to say. Lieutenant Red Panda replied. They said, I missed it. It would have just made me want it more though. Uh, so they, they didn't watch it, but they are really, really excited about the game. Anthony Garcia says, I've only ever played the original game on GameCube and the new Pocket Camp game, so this looks like a lot of fun. There seems to be a good variety of things that you can do in the world, and it has debt can't be an Animal Crossing game without massive and crippling debt. I'm also very interested to, to see that it looks like they changed the currency from bells to miles. And uh, yes, they did add in a secondary currency in the form of miles, but bells are still there in the game. If you go back and you watch the direct again, you'll see that the, the bells are still there. The miles are a secondary currency that you get for completing quests. So you go out, you complete a quest, you get miles, which then you can use to uh, take a flight to a randomized island uh, the pilot will pick where you end up going, uh, and you can maybe collect stuff that would not be available on your island. Uh, Jeremy says, hey, Bill, I'm not into Pokemon and I'm not into Animal Crossing. So what should I be excited for in 2020? And that's a really, really good question. Now, just because uh, Pokemon and um uh, Animal Crossing are the only two games that we know about does not mean that that's all we're going to get from Nintendo. I get the feeling, especially when, with Nintendo being as quiet as they have been, I get the feeling that we are in for a really, really special treat with the next Direct or a, well, okay, maybe not the next Direct, whenever we get a general Direct, because I would not put it past Nintendo to say, hey, everybody, Here's a Nintendo Direct all about this one game that, that maybe we didn't know about when many of us want to hear about a bunch of different games. And 2020 is really kind of a nebulous thing. We have no idea what's happening this year. And the longer that we wait, the more people are getting excited for it. Now, I talked about this yesterday. There is rumors. Is rumors? There are rumors. There we go. That's proper grammar. There are rumors that we are going to be getting another Direct in February. This comes to us from Chris, um, I forgot the guy's last name, but he used to work at the official Nintendo magazine. And he spoke to somebody that he used to work with there. And he said, look, they've only ever been wrong once about uh, something that they've told me. So I'm going to take this as pretty good indicator that we will get a more general Direct coming later on in February. And hey, 
it's it's the 22nd as i record this so it can't be too far behind there's only one more week of february and uh then we're going to be into march so i'm anticipating that we're going to get a full general direct next week maybe announced on a tuesday and um it will be shown on a thursday so that would make it looking at a calendar right now maybe announced on the 25th and we get to watch it on the 27th that's a possibility that's what they did this time anyway i get what you're saying jeremy uh so far nintendo's not told us a lot and and i know that there's a lot of people who are being impatient myself included darkwing replied they said i do wish they would have added the option to not have to share an island on a single switch with five of us and two switches there is going to be some negotiating on how the island looks and you know i have to i'm I don't personally have that as a problem because my son has his own Switch, my wife has her own Switch, my niece doesn't really play video games other than Skyrim, so she's not really interested. That means we don't have to share our islands. Our islands are our islands and we can do whatever we want with them. But if you live in a house with five people and two Switches, then you have to, and you have to share that does mean that there's going to be negotiating not only will there be negotiating but who's going to be on which island you know what i mean that could cause some arguments down the road about who gets to control what's what 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 do we get to where am i going to put this waterfall where am i going to put this store (laughs) i don't like the idea of not being able to make all of those decisions myself which is why i'm happy that i don't have to share one but I really do agree with um, Darkwing here. It would have been nice if Nintendo had just said everybody gets their own island and you get to do whatever you want. Now, if they had done that, there is one drawback. Would you still be able to play together in that four player all at the same time on one screen thing? I think probably. I I don't see why that wouldn't work. And maybe things that you collect, you could take back to your island after the fact. But it it feels like this was done in, in the hopes that people would really take advantage of that four player mode. And I'm going to guess that most people, I'm not going to say everybody, but I'm going to guess that most people will probably be playing this game mostly single player. So to kind of shoehorn in uh, this multi-person island thing to get that four-person mode to work the best, it doesn't seem like a good idea to me, especially when you take into the fact, or take into consideration the idea that, and I've said this before, I... I don't know if it's true, but I'm guessing that the the whole thing where everybody is on one island on your Switch is the real reason why the backups aren't working the way that they should. Because when you back up things on Nintendo Switch, you are backing up your account. You're not backing up the whole Switch. You are backing up your account. And if you transfer just one account to a new Switch... What happens to that Animal Crossing save? That's a really uh, interesting question, and that might be why it doesn't work the way that we all want it to, because Nintendo kind of painted themselves into a corner with this. Let me know what you guys think about this. Webhead said, not a game I will ever play. So they probably were one of the people who said that they hated it. Seth S. Scott, who, if you didn't know, is the creator of Membrane on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I did an interview with them as well as uh, did a video about their game on my YouTube channel, so make sure you check that stuff out. Uh, But Seth said, I still feel like the online slash friend stuff is both not 100% confirmed, but also definitely still stuck in the past. But other than that, it was absolutely floor. I was absolutely floored. And in love with everything about the Direct. Um, 
NerdTron64 says, I thought it looked great playing the GameCube version with my sisters, taking turns upgrading our houses and watching each other take care of our town was one of my favorite gaming experiences growing up. Excited to visit each other's islands on this one. And you know what? It has, they have online play. So maybe, NerdTron, you're going to be able to play with your sister. You know, if, if she has a Nintendo Switch and you have a Nintendo Switch, you can now play online together. And that's a really great way to uh, spend some time together. And if you don't have like a Discord server or something, you can even use the Nintendo Switch online app for voice chat in this game, which is really, really cool. Uh, Maxinaze says, I, I personally loved it. The level of customization in previously previous Animal Crossing games was already pretty large. And in New Horizon, it seems you are able to customize everything about your island. And I agree. I think that the, the like that's the thing that makes Animal Crossing so much fun is that you can just totally make it your own. And I think that it's it's going to be a game where I'm going to be spending many hours just kind of relaxing, maybe watching TV and, and goofing off in Animal Crossing at the same time. I'm very, very excited about this game. Uh, Selin says, for everything, we will be able to customize the whole world. No neighbors where we don't want. So many things to do. Excursions online. And I love the museum. And yeah, the museum looked really, really good. This is a huge upgrade from New Leaf. The museum looks fantastic. Uh, I'm very excited for going out and finding all of the fossils and, and getting the fish and putting them in the aquarium. Like that stuff just looked awesome. Blurpy24, they said, my favorite part was being able to change the terrain of your island and placing villagers where you want them. And that's, that's awesome too. It, you know, for somebody like me who likes everything to be nice and neat and orderly, being able to decide where I want the houses of my villagers is is pretty important. And I think that that's going to really make it easier for me to play this game the way my brain works. And being able to customize the terrain will let me completely uh, put things exactly the way that I want them. And that's very exciting. Um, Eric says, I think it looks amazing. I can't wait to jump in and play my first Animal Crossing game, although I'll have to wait until next year when the Switch Pro is released. I don't want to start n uh, now and put in all those hours and then have to start all over with a new system. That's a really good point, Eric. Uh, if you are thinking of upgrading your Nintendo Switch, Right now, they don't have a way to transfer to a new Switch unless your Switch is damaged or lost. Now, that has since been updated. If you go to the website uh, for Animal Crossing, yesterday, it, it talked about the, the idea of a one-time only save data recovery. Uh, if, you, if you went there yesterday, it says, in case of a defective or lost console, Nintendo Switch Online members can only have data recovered one time due to loss or damage of system. And if you go there now, it says in the case of defective or lost console, more details on save data recovery functionality will be shared at a future date. So they got rid of that language that said you can only do this one time. So maybe Nintendo is listening. And if so, that is huge and awesome and i really really hope that they understand that this is the kind of this is the most important game to have cloud save backup people put hundreds upon hundreds of hours into animal crossing in fact there was a this this guy's grandmother who had been playing new leaf since it first came out and she had i think 1300 hours in New Leaf, and could you imagine if you if you lost that and couldn't move your your stuff to a new system? Like that would be pretty devastating. I couldn't imagine putting all that work into something only to have the rug pulled out from under me. That would be very very upsetting. Uh, which leads me to an email that somebody uh, sent in, listener Ted emailed me. They said I still have a day one switch with a low battery life. I play almost exclusively in handheld. 
but I'm not going to upgrade to the new Switch with improved battery life since I'm holding out for a Switch Pro on the hopes that they release it within a year or so. Here's my problem. I love Animal Crossing and I plan to buy it as soon as it comes out. Like you said, it's a forever game. So if I can't transfer my save data to a new Switch Pro, what do I do? I don't want to have to lose all my save data when slash if the new Switch Pro comes out. Supposedly you can recover the data only if you lose or destroy your old Switch. Does that mean I can upgrade to a Switch Pro and transfer my data, but my old Switch will be unusable? I'm a little confused. Thanks for the help. Your shows are awesome and they make my long commutes so much more interesting. Have a great one. Thank you very much, Ted, for the email. Now, um, if you're confused, you are not the only one and Nintendo really needs to get out ahead of this and start telling us what exactly is the problem here. Be just 100% transparent and explain it. Just like they did when they announced that Metroid Prime 4 got delayed. You know, that's that, that that's a great move. They came out, they, they told us all, and everybody was understanding. Everybody said, oh, you know what? That's fine. Take your time. We're not in a rush. If they are just transparent, people will be okay with it. At least I will. I can't speak for everybody, obviously, but I would be okay with it. All right, let's hear from a sponsor. When we come back, I am going to tell you all about Panzer Dragoon, apparently. Luke Norman tweeted at me using the hashtag. They said, any news on the Panzer Dragoon remake? I thought they initially said uh, 2019 and then quarter one 2020. That's a great question. Um, Panzer Dragoon, I remember playing the hell out of this game when it came out on a Sega system. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it was the Dreamcast, if I remember correctly, or it might have been the Sega Saturn. I had both of those systems. I wish I still had them, uh, but I had both of those systems. And whichever one it was on, I really, really enjoyed that game. Now, if you've never heard of Panzer Dragoon, here's the here's the um, the summary of it. On a far lone planet, you encounter two dragons. They awaken from ancient times. They are armed with a you are armed with a deadly gun from the past and the guidance of your armored blue dragon. You must fulfill your destiny and keep the prototype dragon from reaching the tower or die trying. So basically, you ride on the back of a dragon and you've got this uh, cool uh, gun. And basically, it's almost like an on-rails shooter. It's very, very cool. I had so much fun with it back in the day. Uh, so you are um, go through like these seven levels, which have like these tropical blue ocean cities or uh, intricate subterranean ruins. And up until now, we have been under the, in well, not up until now, but up until recently, it was supposed to come out in 2019, and then it didn't. And then it got moved to quarter one 2020, as uh, Luke Norman says. And now if you go to the website, it just says available winter. I don't know what that means. Does that mean winter of last year and they just haven't updated it? Or does that mean winter of this year? And if they mean winter of this year, do they mean winter you know, like end of the year, like we're talking about um, November or December, or are they talking about early this year, you know, like January, well, obviously not January, most likely not February, and March is the beginning of spring, so I'm guessing that it's gotten delayed a full year. Whatever the reason is, I'm fine with it being delayed as long as we get it eventually. I'm pretty excited for it. It's supposed to be... I remember it being a really, really fun game. Now, that being said, I also remember other things being really, really fun, and then they just very much were not. So, I'll give you an example. There was a movie... I can't remember what movie it was. There was a movie that recently I said, Oh, man, I loved this movie when I was a kid. Uh, I'm going to watch it with my son because... You know, he's he's nerdy like me and he'll probably enjoy it. And we were watching the movie and I thought to myself while watching the movie, wow, this really does not hold up. This movie is not a good movie. I can't believe that I enjoyed this movie. So maybe when I play Plant Panzer Dragoon, I'll say, I can't believe that I loved this game. But I remember loving this game quite a bit. All right. Uh, I also tweeted out another question. I said, do you play your Nintendo Switch mostly docked or mostly handheld? Reply with your reasons, and I'll talk about them on Switchcraft Saturday. 
four. I can't believe how close this is. This is really, really close. So I gave three options for uh, answers. Docked, handheld, or my Switch is a light, meaning that they can only play handheld. 49.4% of people said that they play mostly docked. 46.4% of people said that they play mostly handheld. And then 4.2% of people play on a Nintendo Switch Lite. So if you add all those together, that is um, 50.6% um, of people are playing mostly handheld and 49.4 are mostly docked that's within the margin of error and then this this one actually got quite a few votes now uh let's see what people said at Nin at club nintendo said i play handheld mostly just because i like to watch tv at the same time and play in bed but if i'm playing an online multiplayer game i'll plug it into my dock at my desk uh, at Dustin Aran says, handheld, I should dock it more. I have the Go Play Grip. I don't know what that is. I'll have to look that one up. Uh, but I want the GameCube Joy-Cons. Interestingly enough, I came up with a life hack with the dock. You can take your Switch on a, on a trip, take the dock along. So I saw this and I replied. I said, hey, you know what you ought to do when you take your dock? Because, you know, you put it in your, in your suitcase. Um, take a deck of cards and put them inside the dock and that'll keep it from getting bent by, you know, uh, you know, somebody messing, uh, you know, putting too much pressure on it or something like that. And then somebody else replied and they said, actually, if you do that, you're more likely to be inspected at uh, at the airport. And I was like, oh, that's really, really interesting. I don't know if it's true, but here, let, let's take it out of, out of the airport and let's just say you're going on a trip like a road trip. You want to bring your Nintendo Switch dock? Bring it. Throw a deck of cards in there, and it'll keep it from getting broken, all right? There's just a, a little helpful hint for you. At Blitzkrieg2121 says, handheld and light, maybe 30% docked. Uh, Captain Logan uh, said, a lot of my game is, is, I'm sorry, a lot of my gaming is done on my PC. So when I'm not near my PC, I'm putting time in and the best portable gaming systems out. Uh, at JHarley17 says, 85% docked, give or take 5%. And most undocked is at the bus stop waiting for the kid to get home from school. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. I remember bringing my Game Boy, uh, or, or I would borrow a friend's Game Boy, and I would bring it to school with me, and I would play it uh, while waiting at the bus stop. And now the parents are doing that. Uh, let's see. Chris Enns says, mostly docked. I still don't trust them. I don't know what he means by don't trust them. Um... J.D. Yorkster says, I only play at home, so docked. I love the Pro Controller. Uh, Asher Sky says, I play exclusively on a light. If I had a full-sized one, I'd probably play at mobile. I like to play mostly on the go. It goes well with somebody who transitions rooms and identifies as a plant. I don't know what they mean, identifying as a plant, but you know what, man? You do you. Uh, we'll do one more. Man, we got a lot of replies to this. We'll do one more. Kevin says, I prefer to play handheld as my TV's too far away from me, so I couldn't play comfortably. That was until I set up my gaming station. Now I have a nice 4K monitor I can sit in front of, and now I'm able to enjoy my Switch in docked mode. You know, I understand what you mean, Kevin. I was playing, uh, and this is not a Nintendo thing, uh, but I was playing on Google Stadia last night. Uh, and if you don't know, Google Stadia is basically cloud gaming. So I was playing in my office. I was playing Borderlands 3. I was having a blast, and my wife was in bed reading, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go sit and play in, in there with her. Uh, so I paused my game, I grabbed my phone, I said, move this over to the, the bedroom TV, and I went and I sat in the bed, uh, playing on the bedroom TV, and I couldn't hit anything in Borderlands. It's because all of the targets were too small for my old eyes to see, and like I paused it and looked at my inventory and I had to squint to read all of the stuff because it was just too small. And the, like we've got a smaller TV for the room that we're in and we're on the opposite side of the room. So it was really far away. So I completely understand what Kevin uh, means by having the TV be too far away. However, we also do have a Nintendo Switch docks on every TV in the house. So if I am sitting here at my desk and playing where I record the show, or maybe I'm recording some footage for my YouTube channel. You know, I sit here and it's, it's, this is really the place where I play the most. 
But if I want to play on a TV, like a big screen TV, then I can go downstairs to the living room, dock my Switch, and play it that way. I personally mostly play docked. I really don't play handheld very much, but when I do, uh, I, I, I'm i very happy that I can. The Switch is though, just such a wonderful console for giving you those options. All right, one last thing before we get out of here. Jeremy from Portland sent this to me uh, a while ago, and it just took me forever to get around to looking at it. it it's a movie, uh, well, um, a short film called Zelda The Blood Moon, and it's a live action film with people who are dressed up as Link and Zelda, and uh, I'm not going to tell you anything about it except for it is roughly, I'm going to click to start, it's 16 minutes roughly, and it's really, really well done. Now, the action scenes, for my tastes, were a little too over the top. There were a lot, of, there were tons of jump cuts, uh, you know, because they were doing some really cool martial arts in the in the video, and so they were jump cutting to to get like to get it to look the coolest. And I just felt like that was too over the top myself. However, the overall story that happened in Zelda The Blood Moon is really fantastic. I liked it a lot. I think that if you're watching or listening to this show or watching this on my YouTube channel, you're going to like this too. By the way, YouTube people, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, click the bell, all the stuff. Um, but I think that a lot of people are going to like this. If you want to check this out, it will be in the show notes, which this is episode 480 of Nintendo Switchcraft. And you can find those show notes over at runjumpstomp.com. All right. Become a part of the community. Join our discord runjumpstomp.com slash discord. There's a, over a thousand people there waiting to talk to you about video games. You don't have people around you that, that like to discuss video games? Join the Discord. That's kind of one of the reasons that I started doing this content is because none of my friends in real... Well, very few of my friends in real life care about video games, and I just wanted to be able to talk about them. So that's why this, this show started. That's why all of my content creation started was because I was looking for a community of people to chat with about video games. And I, I think over time we have built a wonderful community. So again, that's runjumpstomp.com slash discord. You can also watch the show live uh, when I do it live over at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. And of course, if you want to get your thoughts on the show, use the hashtag on Twitter, AskRJS. This show is part of the Giant Size Team Up Network. For more information, check out gstu.net. And if you want to support the show, go to runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. The music that you are about to hear is uh, Corneria Star Fox Remix by Noteblock. Thank you all for listening. I hope you have an awesome day. Stay, stay rad. Stay rad.